Hey guys, it's Victoria. So I've had my Glowforge for about two and a half years, and today I'm going to show you some things I've learned along the way that have helped me work smarter, not harder. Alright, now I am on my computer and I have the Glowforge software open. To get here, I just went to app.glowforge.com, and this is the homepage where all your files will be listed. And if you're ever looking for a file that maybe you did a long time ago that you can't find, you can scroll down and click on View All, and then go up to the top right where it says Search by Name, and then the Glowforge will pull up any files that had that name. If you click on the top right corner, there is a little arrow on each file, and there you can delete, rename, or make a copy of a file. Now I'm going to go over the key commands that I use all the time. To zoom in and out, you do Command plus to zoom in, and then Command minus to zoom out. And if you're on a PC, anytime I say Command, it's going to be Control. So if you're on a PC, it's going to be Control plus to zoom in, and then Control minus to zoom out. To move something over slightly, you would just highlight it, and then click on the right or left arrow on your keyboard. So this is one that I use all the time to move around the artboard. Hold down on the spacebar and then click and drag. To copy and paste something, click and highlight it and then hit Command C and Command V. To resize something, you just highlight it and click on any of the corners and then just drag it out. And I'm not holding down Shift or anything and it stays proportionate. And to rotate something, you're just going to click on the little circular arrow and then just move it the way that you want to and then let go. To undo, hit Command Z. And then to delete a file, just highlight it and click delete. Over here is always going to be the layers of the file where you tell the Glowforge what you want it to do. I like to make my score lines blue so they always show up on top and I make my cut lines red so they show up on the bottom. You can click the Glowforge icon in the top left at any time to go back to the home page. If you ever forget any of the keyboard shortcuts, they're listed over here on the right. If you ever find that your app is running slow, a good thing to do is clear your cache. If you're on a Mac to do that, you're just going to hold down Command, Shift, and then R. To clear your cache on a PC, hold down Control and then press F5. I like to avoid wasting material whenever possible. For this example, I would get a lot more prints with this layout than if I just lined the strawberries up in a row. When cutting in bulk, I like to put all my designs into one file and then upload that file to the app. I've noticed that the Glowforge app sometimes gets slow and buggy if you copy and paste too many times, so I like to do it this way. If I'm creating a bunch of new designs at once, that are all being printed on the same material, I'll print them all at the same time, and then I'll see which designs need editing, and then I'll edit them all at once, and then cut them all again, instead of just doing one at a time. Another way to avoid wasting material is to use draft board or a cheap material to create your first prototypes, or if you just want to check the size of something, print it out on a regular sheet of paper and see if you like the size. If you're having to do multiple runs of something, for example, I did quite a few runs to get this heart to fit inside of the stand. You want to cut only the parts that you absolutely need until you're happy with the fit. I only cut out the bottom of the heart at first because that's the part that needed to fit inside of the base. Printing the entire heart a bunch of times would have been a big waste of material. Create designs a bit bigger than you actually want them. For example, when designing this puffin, I made his feet a bit large to account for kerf which is a material loss caused by the Glowforge's laser beam. If you're not comfortable creating your own design files, there are tons of files out there that you can purchase, and Glowforge actually has a design catalog that you can get to by clicking on Catalog in the Glowforge app. I also have my own download store that I'll link below, where I also sell digital downloads. I find it helpful to do the tasks that I'm not excited about first thing in the morning to get them over with. For example, if I have to glue earrings that day, I'll do that first. If you're 
cutting or scoring acrylic, you can actually remove tape from the top and bottom and put a thin layer of cardboard behind it to prevent scratching. Serial cardboard actually works great for this. That way you're not having to peel off tape from a bunch of individual pieces. It's always smart to do an assembly line technique instead of doing anything one at a time. I like to save all my project ideas in the app called Asana. I have them broken down into project types. I also have a make next board so I'm not overwhelmed by all the different projects I've listed and I know what I want to work on next. Label makers are also great for organizing materials and tools. They're also great for making reminders. Organizing the materials that I use for different projects together in bins has been such a time saver. For example, I have all the materials that I use for painting earrings in the bin labeled paint. All right, well that's all I have for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And also, if you're in the market for a Glowforge, I'm going to include my referral link in the description where you can get anywhere from $125 to $500 off, depending on which model you get, and I'll get paid that amount as well. Alright, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!